hello lovely people welcome back to my channel i'm adi Binkwe from star by binta and today i'm going to be showing you how to make this trendy beautiful kaftan bubu dress it's going to be as simple as possible this bubu dress is going to be having zip at the back it's going to be fully lined it's going to be having bead also in the center front and it's also going to be having bat wing sleeve a loose opening sleeve just as you see it's going to be well shaped at the sides also so it's going to be a smart booboo so the first thing i'd like you to do if you're interested in content like this and you're coming across my video for the first time is to please like this video subscribe to my channel turn on your notification button so as for you to get notified when i upload new videos share this video and leave a comment for me thanks so the first thing i did was to measure out the ankara fabric the ankara fabric often comes in 45 inches length so it's not up to the length of my client so i turned the length of the ankara fabric to the width of my client while the width of the ankara fabric becomes the length of my client so i measured out the length of my client on the on the ankara fabric i had it two inches to it and i folded it into four this is what i have so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to impute the length so i'm going to be starting from the edge of this ankara fabric and i'm going to be imputing the length of my client so the first length i'm going to be imputing is the bust point which is 14 inches followed by the waist length which is 19.5 inches followed by the hip length which is also 26 inches so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to mark four inches beneath the hip line so i'm going to be marking that one out too so this reason for this four inches will be explained later so i went ahead and i ruled a straight line on the four lines and i went ahead to name them so the next thing i did was to impute the full length of the dress so i'm going to be making use of 57 plus 2 inches which is going to be for the m allowance so it's going to be giving me 59 so i'm going to be making a point on both the full length and the allowance also so i'm going to be ruling a straight line on them both. so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to work on the shoulder part so i'm going to be dividing the shoulder of my client divided by two and imputing it so the shoulder in this case is 16 inches divided by two will give me eight so i impute it and i also measure the remaining length remaining on the ankara fabric as the sleeve length so this is going to be this measurement for now but later i'm going to be adjusting it so the next thing i did was to measure the width of the neckline in this case i'm making use of 3.5 inches why the length for the back is going to be 2.5 inches so the length for the front is going to be 5.5 inches in other words i have 3.5 inches by 2.5 inches for the back why for the front i have the width of 3.5 inches by the length of 5.5 inches for the front so i went ahead for the back part to cover this to cover it out so what i did to guide myself to have a perfect round neck is i came from this angle by one inch and i blend it in on both sides why for the front neckline i came in by 1.5 inches and i curved it out just as you see me do it in the video so the first one is going to be for the back piece why the second line is going to be for the front piece so the next thing i did was to slit the shoulder part into two so that i can have the front piece different from the back piece so it's not going to be together at the shoulder part so i'm going to be slitting it because back piece is going to be having at the center back so i needed at least one inch zip allowance at the back so i have to remove the back piece to be able to get that so the next thing i did was to measure one inch the length of the width of this ruler is one inch so just placing it on the ankara fabric just as you see me doing means i've already measured one inch out so this is going to be for the zipper allowance so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to notch it fold it from that line then notch. this is going to guide me in stitching it together so at the hem line too at the down part i went ahead and i notched it also i folded the one inches in just as you see me doing then after folding it in i placed the front piece on it those as you see me do and i'm ensure that they are aligning at the center at the center front and at the center back but i had already folded the one zipper allowance in so it's not inclusive at the back in this case so i'm having the excess of one inch at this edge just as you can see so so i'm going to have to measure a new sleeve so everything i have left on the back piece will be my new sleeve length so i marked it out just as you see me do
so the next thing i'm going to do is to come to the line beneath the hip line which is four inches away from the hip line on this very line i'm going to be imputing the hip circumference divided by four plus 2.5 inches this 2.5 inches is for sewing and for ease allowance at this part so from that point i'm going to be blending it into the sleeve part so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to blend it together so i'm blending it to the sleeve opening part so i'm going to ensure that it aligns with the back piece beneath so i'm going to check what i have you know the back piece is reduced by one inch because of, because of the zipper allowance so i blend it up to the shoulder part so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to impute what will be my circumference for the m line and also for the food allowance line so whatever i have on this line which is four inches beneath the hip line i'm going to be imputing it on the m line and on the two inches food allowance also so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to connect the two points together just as you see me do so the next thing i'm doing here is to show you how the shaping is going to be so this is eventually going to be the last thing i will do after coupling the whole piece together with the lining and shaping the neck fixing the zip and also fixing my beads on it this will be the last thing i'm going to be doing i just want to show the illustration this i'm going to do it i'm going to be placing the four folds together and i'm going to be imputing the exact both circumference divided by four plus half or one inch is allowance if you want it a bit loose you can make one inch if you want it smart you can make half inch if you want it really very smart you can even use your your both circumference divided by four. remember there is zip at the back so is not going to be difficult to, to wear so i'll come to the waist also i'll measure the waist circumference divided by four or also add ease allowance if i want some ease then i'll come to the hip line and do the same also and whatever i have on the hip side that is what i'm going to use for the remaining measurements being so at the four inches away from the hip line i'm also going to be adding half inch is allowance to it just as i did for the previous measurements above so the next thing i did was to connect the points together so so this is how the shape is going to be looking like eventually so the next thing i did was to cut it out starting from the neckline so i cut from the back neckline because it's shorter then i'm going to be cutting the upper one for the front neckline so i shaped it out just as you see me so at this neckline for the front part i'm going to be reducing it by one inch because from the design we are following this neckline part is fully beaded to the neck joined to the back piece so i'm going to be reducing it by one inch and i'm going to be blending it just as you see me do this is absolutely not compulsory you may leave yours just like that so i went ahead and i cut it out the next thing i did was to cut the sides also So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to slit zipper allowance. I'm going to be slitting it into two. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to determine how long I want the space for the bead to be on the main fabric. So from the hip line, I'm going to be coming down by two inches. You can do more depending on your choice. But for me, I like to just do two inches beneath the hip. So I'm going to be connecting it to the neckline, just as you see me do. So the next thing I did was to cut it out. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to place it on a lining because this particular dress is fully lined and I'm going to be tracing it out and cutting it out on the lining also. I'm going to be doing this for both the front and the back piece. So the back is going to be having two pieces because of the zipper allowance that is going to be there. I'm going to be slitting through the zipper allowance also. The lining did not reach the full length so this is what I have at the hem line so i'm going to be turning the ankara on it eventually so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to work on the back piece so the first thing i'm going to be doing there is to rule out the zipper allowance line which is one inch in so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to mark the half length from the shoulder line down and it's going to be 16 in this case the back half length is 16 in this case so i rule a straight line on it so on this half length line from the zipper allowance side I'm going to be coming in by half inch this is just to give this part some fitting remember it's a smart bubble dress we are making so to get this i had to measure the hip line i measured the hip line of 26 inches and i really straight line 
on it. So I'm going to be blending the half inch I came with in with at the center back towards the hip line and also towards the neckline. It's not going to be getting to the hip line. It, neither is it going to be getting to the neckline. So it's going to stop. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to replace the zipper allowance of one inch on the half length line. So I'm going to be measuring one inch from that line outwards and I'm going to be blending it into the neckline and also to the hip line just as I did for the first line. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to cut the excess that I'm going to be having left at the center back out. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I pick a piece of, of the two piece for the back clothes and lining. So I place the anchor on the lining and I'm going to be stitching around the neckline. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to notch around the neckline and the next thing I'm going to be doing is to flip it open. So lay it flat just as the same with you. Then I'm going to be flipping it towards the same part towards the lining side and I'm going to be top stitching on it. I did the same for the other back piece and this is what I have. So I went ahead and I ironed the one inch zipper allowance on the two back piece and this is what I have. This is going to guide me in fixing the zip. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to flip the clothes right side facing right side and I'm going to be stitching it at the side of the zipper allowance from the neckline down to the hip hem line so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to fix the zip so to do so i'm going to be placing the right side facing right side of the two back piece and i'm going to be stitching from where the zipper two inches away from where the zipper is going to end i'm going to be stitching it down to the hem line then i'm going to be guided by this line i've created from ironing the so uh, the zipper allowance on the clothes then i'm going to be stitching the zipper to it so this is what i have so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to flip open one side of this back piece and i'm going to be pushing the other side into his and i'm going to be stitching the side together right side facing right side so this is the best method to use and turn the side of this particular style so i went ahead and i notch around it the next thing i'm going to be doing is to pull the side i push inside out and this is what i have so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to repeat the same process for the other side so the next thing i will be doing is to work on the neckline this is the cut as i cut out from the ankara piece i'm going to be replacing it with a black material i'm going to be placing the ankara piece on the black material and i'm going to be marking it out i am as well going to be adding a seam allowance of half inch all around it so i went ahead and i cut it out So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to cut a facing for this center piece. So I had already cut a facing for it and this is what I have. The next thing I'm going to be doing is to stitch around the neckline. So I went ahead and I stitched around the neckline. So I'm going to be notching around it and this is what I have. So I'm going to be flipping the sewn parts to the side of the lining and I'm going to be top stitching on it by quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch. So this is what I have after stitching on it. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to hold the side down by quarter of an inch. This is just to help me control these two pieces. So I'm going to be using it as one piece together. So this is what I have. And the next thing I'm going to be doing is to place it on the center front on the main fabric. So I'm going to be aligning the actual neckline of 5.5 inches I had earlier marked on the fabric itself so the distance i have here is due to the stitch allowance that i did not have to the neckline so it is coming down by half an inch so every other thing is pretty much the same so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to come down from this 5.5 by one inch this is to enable me have more room for the beads at the neckline and it's going to be giving me 6.5 all together so since i've come down by one inch at this neckline I notched the new neckline on the main fabric. I'm going to be placing the cutters back to it, making sure it's aligned with the initial line I've marked on the black piece. So I'm going to be aligning it to the new one inch I came down with and I'm going to be notching it. So by implication, the center black piece is coming down by one inch. So I had to make room for it again at the hip line. So in between the hip line and four inches away from the hip line, 
I came down by one inch also. Blend it in to the V-shaped line and I went ahead and I put it out. So this is what I have. So this is how it's going to look like. So the next thing I'm going to ensure is I'm placing the right side of the center piece with the right side of the beam fabric. So notch to notch at that neckline side and I'm going to be pinning it down from one side down to the end of the V-shape just as you see it. So I went ahead and I pinned them down. So at this very edge, I have the excess of half of an inch, which is very okay to work with. So I went ahead and I stitched from the neckline down to the end of the V-shape. So this is what I have after stitching through it. So at that end of the V-shape, I went ahead and I notched just a little. This is also to enable me to be able to not have fold around that place. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to flip it just as you see me do to the other side and I'm going to be pinning it down if you still need to. Most important place to pin down is that notch to notch just as you see me do. You just have to pin it down so as to enable it align other parts and if you can do it without pinning it down, good. So I'm going to be stitching the other side just as I'm showing. So I went ahead and I notched around the both sides after stitching them together. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to place the lining on it, wrong side facing the wrong side, and I'm going to be flipping the whole lining to one side, just as you see me do, and I'm going to be stitching around the neckline. So I'm going to be flipping it open again, then flip the other side on it, then I'm going to be stitching around the other neckline, just as you see me do. So this is what I have after stitching both necklines together with the lining. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to repeat the same thing I did for the front piece. I'm going to be opening one side and I'm going to be pushing the other side in between it. And I'm going to be connecting right side, facing right side of the front piece together. And I'm going to be stitching on it. This is the best way to stitch your side together with the lining. So in stitching it together, Ensure that you follow the shape that we have at the side. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to notch around this shape. This is just to make it relax. So this part is not going to be squeezing out on the right side. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to pull what I kept inside outside, which is the other side of the front piece. So I went ahead and I push it out. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to do exactly the same thing for the other side. So this is what I have after stitching the both sides together with the lining. So this is what I have. The only part I have left open is the, sh the shoulders and the hem lines. So the next thing I did was to put the front piece on it. Remember, I had already cut short from the front piece neckline. So it's one inch shorter than the back piece. So I'm going to be aligning it together. I'm going to be ensuring that at this leaf part it is equal. So I'm going to be stitching them together. So at this point, before closing the sides, the first thing I'm going to be doing is to bead the center front. So here are the things I'm going to be needing. This is the special needle for beading. It is very tiny, so it can pass through the hole of any bead size. So this particular one is size 12, and it has 20 pieces in it. So here is a fishing line, specially also made for beading. It has a neutral color, like a water-like color, so it's blending into any kind of color fabric. So, but I'm not going to be working with it in this case. So I'm going to be placing it aside. It's equally strong and you can work with it. So this is a normal, a regular thread. It is too fragile for this project because it breaks easily. But in this case, I'm going to be working with this drawing. It's in number three. So it is very slim, as slim as a regular thread for sewing. So I'm going to be working with this because I trust it better. This is also a glass bead. Yeah, this particular one is a broken bead, but it is also glass. So I prefer this and this is how it looks. So it is very, very tiny. So and easy to work with also. So the last thing I'm going to be needing is the lighter. So it, I'm going to be using it to clean up the inside of my beading on the main fabric. So the first thing I did on the clothes was to lay it flat, just as you see me do. Then I'm going to measure from the neckline down, just to get a straight line. So I roll up the straight line, 
the next thing I'm going to be doing is to pass the thread to the needle. So I went ahead and I passed it to the needle and I cut it out. I make sure I'm working with the length I can easily work with without. So after passing it through the needle high, I took one strand of the thread and I'm going to be knotting it. This side is going to be the longest one to the other side. So I knot it at the edge. So I'm going to be knotting it at the very edge and I'm going to also be knotting two to three inches in. I'm going to be making sure the knot is big enough so as for it to withstand any pull from the outside side. So the next thing I went ahead to do was from this initial line I marked on the fabric, I'm going to be coming down by 1.5 inch. This is going to determine how deep I want the bead to fall to. So the bead is going to be falling to this 1.5 inches line. If you want it more, you can increase it. So the next thing I did is I went from inside, from the wrong side of the fabric out to the right side, then from the right side back to the wrong side. I repeat this process like twice. This is just to secure my my stitch because you can't go through all this beading process and have it fall to the ground. So here is the inside part and that is the extra two to three inches that I have left dangling on the inside part. So I'm going to be knotting it to the next strand of the uh, bead that is going to be coming in later but it's going to be lying like that for now so on the inside on the right side now i'm going to be taking the needle and i'm, and I'm going to be feeding in the beads to the needle sometimes it's a big one some it won't sometimes it won't pick anything but other times it will almost fill the needle up so you just continue to dip it inside the uh, bead plate and you're going to ensure that you have a almost filled up needle then you're going to be pushing it down to the thread so i'll continue to dip it into the bead plate till i have enough for the line i'm making so i'm going to be sizing it to the body of the fabric or the semicircle shape and i'm going to be aligning it to the other side of So I align it to the other side and I ensure that the bead that I have is enough to form my semicircle shape. So this is what I have. So if it is not enough, I'm going to be picking more. If it is enough, I'm going to be working with it straight up. So from this side, I'm going to be coming from inside out. So I'm coming from the uh, front side and I'm going to be pushing through to the wrong side. So there are different methods you can use to bead your fabric, but I'm going to be using two methods in this case, and this is one of them. So ensure that you're not pulling uh, your thread too tight. If you pull it too tight, the beads are not going to be relaxing. They're going to stand so hungrily. So you have to ensure that they are not too loose, but they are not tight at all. So ensure that they are well relaxed this is when you have that uh, wavy effect when you pull your dress up so i'm going to be coming from the inside out once again so this is just to ensure that the bead is secured and nothing is pulling it away from the dress So I'm going to be knotting it very close to the clothes on this wrong side. So I'm going to also be knotting two to three inches away from the clothes again. So I'm going to be having the excess of two to three inches away from the clothes on the thread. So the next thing is I'm going to be working on the second line and I'm going to be showing you how to space it. But before then, I repeat the same process. I pass the thread through the needle high, then the longest strand, I knot it at the very edge 
and I came in by two to three inches and I knot three to four times on that point and knot it to make it big enough to withstand the pull from the right side. So for proper and neat spacing, at this very edge, I will be targeting 1 to 1.5 bead spacing. So from the initial line, I'm going to be targeting below it 1 to 1.5 bead and targeting it and coming in from the uh, wrong side with the neat out to the right side, then from the right side back to the wrong side. I repeat this process. So it's going to be lower to the first line by 1 to 1.5 beads by this edge. So I'm going to be doing the same thing to the other edge. So whatever bead size you're working with, it is important not to start your second line too close to the first line. You're going to choke up that space. You need some space for the beads to relax. I'm going to be knotting it with the first strand I have left out and the second line I have left out. You know, I left two to three inches out. So I'm going to be knotting them together and I'm going to be using a lighter to clean it up. It's not going to be burning my knot, it's just going to be just very close to the knot, just to make the inside part neat and to secure my knot also. So this is what I have. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to feed in the beads to the needle. So I'm going to be picking what will be enough for the next line. Remember, I'm not targeting the exact uh, point where the first line is. I'm targeting one and a half beads beneath it. Because I'm working towards a more slimmer side of the V-shape. But if I'm going towards the neckline, I'm going to be increasing the beads, not reducing the beads. So from this right side also, like I said, targeting the second bead on the first line, I'm going to be coming in from the right side to the wrong side with the needle. So I pull it out from the wrong side and I'm going to be pushing in to the right side again and pushing it back to the wrong side. So on the wrong side, I went ahead and I did another method. I, so I went ahead and I picked a little piece of fabric. It's not going to be showing on the uh, right side. And I wrap some thread around it and I pull out just as you see me do. I repeat the same process twice. I, so I went ahead and I reduced the length. Then I knot it to the first strand I have dangling on the wrong side. So I knot it two to three times. And I went ahead with my lighter to clean it up. So it's going to be looking very neat and perfect on the inside and also on the outside side. So this is what I have on the right side and this is what I did for the ones I had already done that you are seeing. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to move to the neckline. So I lay the back piece flat and I ensure that I have a straight line on the neckline. So I drew a straight line just to draw an imaginary line at this neckline. The one inch I left, I reduced the front piece width is already closed with a stitch so i came down by 5.5 inches this is the actual opening i want for the neck line so it's not going to be choking to the neck if you make use of three inches it is going to be very close to the neck like almost chokingly close to the neck so i made use of 5.5 inches and i'm going to be drawing the circle around it to the shoulder line to the back shoulder line just as you see me do so this is a sort of a guide for me to beat this neckline so the next thing I'm going to be doing is to bring the beads that I had already feed into the thread and I had already knotted the damp parts twice just as I've done to the previous one I did on the cloth. So I'm going to be having excess on the thread. So it is this excess that I'm going to be threading to the needle. So I went ahead and I thread the excess to the needle. This is another method entirely that I used for this neckline. So I prefer this method so well because it enabled me to uh, divide my because I went to beat it in a more comfortable position and now I'm fixing it to the 
upload it. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be inserting the needle from the front part to the inside part. Then from the inside part, I'm going to be inserting it back to the front part. Then I'm going to be repeating the process. I'm going to be removing the needle. Then I'm going to be knotting it at the very end. And I'm going to be coming in by two to three inches also and also knotting it there about two to three times just to make it thick enough. So I'm going to be knotting it and I'm going to be pulling from the right side. So these two inches is just to help me know the next line that is coming. This is to further uh, secure the bits from falling off. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to pull it out on the right side. So I pull it very firm and you can see that it's not pulling out. So the reason why I could pull it very firm here is because there is no bit here. So I'm going to be pushing the bit towards the neckline just as you see. So I'm going to align it to the other neckline also and I'm going to ensure they are relaxed, they are not too tight. So if it is not enough, I'm going to be pushing more bits to the neck. So this is what I have. The next thing I am going to be doing is to measure some inches, about five inches from on the on the thread, and I'm going to be cutting out of it. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to pass this edge to my needle. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to come from outside in, and I'm going to be pulling through. Then I'm going to be coming from inside out again, just to make sure this place is well dealt with. So I'm going to be coming from outside in again, then I'm going to be knotting it. So the next thing I'm going to be doing on the inside part is to push the needle taking a little fabric but it's not going to be as deep as picking from the outside part so i'm going to be wrapping some uh, thread around it and i'm going to be knotting it i'm going to be doing this so i'm going to be cutting it two inches away from the knot so this two inches i'm going to be using it to knot the next one that is coming together then i'm going to be using a lighter to finish it up just as i did for the chest part and i'm going to be repeating the same process all through the front piece all through so for the ones i've done this is how it looks and the next thing i'm going to be doing after beading the whole thing it took me about five days or a week so the next thing i'm going to be doing on the wrong side folded into four is to impute the boss point the waistline then the hip line and also the four inches away from the hip line this is just to illustrate how it is going to be so i'm going to be marking it on the edge on the four edges that i'm going to be having on this dress So the next thing I'm going to be doing is from these four inches away from the hip line, I'm going to be stitching straight down by half inch. But I'm going to be stitching it straight down to the hem line by half inch. But in case where you want slit opening, you can measure from your hem line upwards by 18 inches. You can even do 20. That should do for your sleeve slit opening so the next thing i'm going to be doing here is to ensure that i reflect these lines all the lines i have on this uh on this wrong side on all the edges so i'm going to ensure that i reflect all the four lines on the four edges of this dress this is just to help me have a line on the right side without having to mark it again so this is the right side the next thing i am, and i have stitched the sides from four inches away from the hip line downwards so the next thing i'm going to be doing those are the lines i reflected on the other side so it will guide me to shape the right side of the dress so this is what i have on the right side so i'm going to be folding it into four this is what i have so i went ahead and i retraced those chalked out parts so here it is sorry about the lighting here 
so i went ahead and i marked the four lines so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to measure the actual so i went ahead and i input all of the bust line at the edge i placed my tape on the center front and i input the bust circumference divided by four i did not have any ease allowance to this because my clients want it very smart so i went to the waist side too and i input waist circumference divided by four i marked it out So the hip line also, I marked the hip circumference divided by 4 also. Then 4 inches away from the hip line, I'm also going to be inputting what I have exactly on the hip line there also. So this will be enough for his to work. So I'm going to be connecting the points together. And I'm going to be coming down by 4 inches again from the four inches away from the hip line all together i'm coming down from the hip line by eight inches uh, to give the final shaping to the dress so this is what i have so i'm going to be connecting the points together so this is what i have the next thing i'm going to be doing is to determine how wide i want the sleeve parts to be so i went to the shoulder line and i came down by 12 inches and on that 12 inches i make a point i mark that 12 inches then the next thing i'm going to be doing is to input the exact bust circumference divided by four that i had on the bust line on that 12 inches point so this is what i have and this is exactly how i'm going to be stitching it on the machine so this is what i'm going to be following to stitch so i'm going to be reflecting it on the other side too and i'm going to be doing exactly the same thing so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to stitch the hemline and as you can see i've already done that so at this point we have come to the end of the tutorial i'm going to go and do the stitching off the camera so if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please do so and give this video a thumbs up